Before you get started with the lesson, let me give you a quick overview of how to use this series of videos. This is a series that covers Microsoft Office 2013 using documents, spreadsheets, and presentations. I'm a teacher. I work in Collison, Arizona at a high school called Westview High School. These assignments are selected to be exactly like what you would do in the real world. So using Office is what you'll use in a real office or in a real business. There is an assignment book that accompanies every video. Each page in the assignment book has a checklist of the things that you should accomplish in each lesson. Watch the video lesson to see how things are done. After you create your own document using the video as a model, you may have some modifications such as your own business names or your own paragraphs or your own data, but it'll look very similar. Now you can either watch the whole video through at one time or pause it as you go through it. Finally, print the document and your classroom teacher will grade it. So now, let's move on to your next assignment. Welcome to assignment number seven, a newsletter with Microsoft Publisher. In this assignment, you're going to create a one-page layout of what a newsletter or a newspaper would look like. Using Publisher, you can create custom areas like a headline and a date line. Notice the two columns and the placement of the pictures. There's a few things at the bottom of the page, like a standout quote and a custom border for this frame here. All of this could be done in Microsoft Word. Actually, this one was done in Word, but much easier in Publisher. Let's get started. I'll show you the steps for creating a newsletter in Microsoft Publisher. We're using Publisher 2013. I'm going to create a blank document. Now, the first thing we should do is plan out the headline or the top of the page. So, this will require a text box. I'm going to draw a new text box starting at the corner of the blue area, the blue margin, about this large. I'm going to type in the title. Sporting news is what I'm calling mine. The, te the headline needs a, a larger font, so I'm going to highlight the words and expand. We're up to 90. 100 is too large. You notice that the box doesn't show the whole text anymore. Back to 90. I'm also going to pick a different font something that would look good for a headline. You choose once again your own style. Now a couple other adjustments. I'm going to adjust the box a little bit taller and center this for whatever that's worth. The next item to put in is our date line. I'm going to put another box in about right there and the date line tells us when this was printed and where it was printed so let's put in a date and let's see I'm going to set a tab here at the middle of the page and press tab on my keyboard and put in the location of the city and then press tab once more let's set a tab down about this end and let's put in our volume issue volume one number one. Once more I need to adjust the tab so that it moves backwards to about six. Okay, a couple other things you could do is double click on the tab, change it to a center align tab. Okay. Let's change the borders on this. So let's go to our border options format and let's choose shape outline and give it a border. Now the last thing that we need to include on the text area is to have some columns of text. So I'm going to create a text box starting here and down to the bottom. and start my story. I'm going to put in a, a long story here so I'll start typing now. Okay, I, I have filled up my first column of text and you notice that I have red handles on the edges of this of this text frame. 
That indicates that there's more text that I've typed, but it doesn't show up here. What I need to do is create a second text frame. So I will make another column about the same size as the first. I'll actually adjust these so that they are the same width. Now, to get the text to flow from one column to the next, what I need to do is click on this little box here that shows an ellipsis, the three dots. And then, you notice my cursor on my mouse turns into a little can of letters that is spilling. And as soon as I click, the letters form the next column. Okay, let's zoom in a little bit on the text to see what it actually says. So I'm going down to here where the zoom indicator is. You can see that this story shows a feature article from a newspaper about my business. Your business will have its own specialty newspaper. So when you write about your company, you might talk about how a reporter would look at it. He says there's a unique idea in Phoenix, and then he describes the business model. Down below it talks about the new facilities that are here, about hiring new people. There's going to be always interest in people finding new jobs, our plans for growth, and then the last paragraph on this side, or two paragraphs, are about satisfied customers, and then some related news in a different story. Let's do some formatting to make this look better. Let's zoom out a little bit. Okay, what I'd like to do next is to format the headlines so that they look like headlines. They're bigger. Usually in Microsoft Word you would look for the heading styles. Well, I don't seem to find those here on Microsoft Publisher. So, using text boxes we can do almost as good. I'm going to highlight the first headline, change its style. I'll make it a little bit larger and maybe pick a different font. And then I'm going to change its color. Now, in Microsoft Word with styles, we would have a nice quick way to format all the headlines using the heading format. In this case, I'm going to use what's called Format Painting. I'm going to go to the Home tab and click where it says Format ta Painter. The painter will take the style collection that I have highlighted here and allow me to paste it automatically just by highlighting another hi another section. Now I'd like to format this same style on other areas so I will select it again click the format painter tool either here or up here scroll down until I come to new facilities and we will paint that. Let's click the format painter and click the next item and continue the process Okay, now I have highlighted and formatted every one of my paragraph headers. Okay, now I have my headlines formatted. I'd like to add a picture for maybe a baseball stadium. So let's go up to the word insert and then choose online pictures. And when the office clip art gallery comes up, I'm just going to put in baseball stadium and see what I find. I see baseballs. Let's just see... Um, well, there's somebody that looks like they're playing. I'll choose this one. A large picture. Well, I don't want it that large. I'm just going to shrink it, move it toward the center of the page. Maybe add a custom shadow. That one seems to work. A little bit larger. One other feature that I'd like you to do is to create a highlight quote. You see that I quoted somebody here that says, we can't wait to get involved. And then another says, for too long we have only been spectators in the stands. That sounds like a good one. I'm going to highlight this sentence and right click, choose copy. 
Now I want to create a new text box. If I click outside of the all of the objects here to deselect them, right click there and just choose paste, Microsoft Publisher will automatically create a new text box for me since I had pasted some text. Let's resize the text about that. Let's center it. Maybe conclude the end quote. Let's make it a fancier font, something more cursive. Okay, I'd like to add some more items like a um, like a border around the edge. Let's see what we can find for different ways to format our text box. Okay, lastly, related news. I'd like to create its own story for this text. I'm going to highlight this paragraph. And this time I'm going to cut the item. So I'm right clicking, selecting cut. Click outside of all the objects to deselect them and paste. Right click and choose paste. And now it's its own story. It's floating around in its own text box. So let's make this one at the end of the story. And let's go and choose a outline format for this one. Dotted lines with a shadow. You notice that my story ends here and I have a big space at the end. Well, I could put a picture in there or maybe make the font a little more readable. If you notice up here in the text formatting area, it says that my font is size 10. That's actually a little small for people to read, so I'm going to select the entire story. I'm going to click at the beginning and just drag my mouse to the end. And then I'm going to bump the font size by one click. Scroll down to see what that did. and That seems to fit about right. My story font size is now listed as 11. The headlines are a little bit bigger. They are at 16. Okay, let's zoom back out to see the whole page. I have an article. I have a headline. I have a date line. I have a photo. I have all the items that I want for my newspaper. Save it, print it, and good luck publishing.